Okay, I've got these floors stuck down now, and I have started on the um, crenellations, I suppose you'd call this. Basically, just chopped up bits of pop, uh, popsicle stick, basically cut into four pieces, and then sharpened at the edges, and then hot glued on, and if my glue gun is hot enough yet, no it's not, I'll start on that bit. Um, but basically, whilst I'm waiting then, just a few things that I've done. I have glued around the edges here and such. Oh, you can't see that at all, can you? No. I've glued around here. I'll see if I can tilt it up enough so you can see. There you go. On this one. And I put another uh, popsicle stick in there to rest this on so that it covered up any hole. This one wasn't too bad. There was a slight hole, but I pretty much covered that mostly in with glue. Uh, I'll go back around those sort of things when I've finished doing the things like the crenellations and that and um, I'll fill in any more but the main thing to remember is a lot of this, any slight imperfections and such especially bits like glue and all that are going to be covered up by the texturing that we're going to do last off which will be something that will have to be done in stages I can start it this evening but sadly I don't think I'm going to get a chance to finish this whole video tonight and uh, put it all on. Right, my glue gun's still a bit cold so if you give me a bit then I'm just going to pause it and um, I'm going to go back. Right, and we're back. The glue gun's basically warmed up now so let's carry on. I've already cut a load so all I'm going to do is just put a line of glue along here. Maybe a bit more than that. There we go. And then just very quickly put a collection of these along there. Oh, not quite gone to plan, has it? Maybe a little bit more there. Right, this is the trick of course, don't get too cocky and do too many at one time. The other way of course you can do this is a little bit on each one and then I find if you push it down it makes sure all the glue stays underneath it. And it's just filling that hole, I know it was naughty of me but this is all because it's not going to look perfect. Do do do. Little blob there. I'll stick there. I'll stick there. Basically, just keep doing this. I'll finish doing this wall, and then I'll do the rest of them off the camera. I must admit, this was the most time-consuming part of the whole project so far. Is actually just putting a tip on all of these. Of course, you don't have to do this, but I thought I'd do it just to see how it looked. To be honest. This is still something I'm experimenting with. Um, I may have made it sound in the first place like this was a video where I perfected it all, but I haven't. But you can see what's happening so far. All we're doing is just getting a nice little covering at the top. It also gives it a bit more height for the figure standing behind and, more importantly, makes it look just that little bit more orky. So, I will just uh, finish this up. And then we will come back once I've done that and we will talk about how I'm going to do the texturing. Bye bye. Okay. <clears throat> and welcome back. I've finished off the roof. It took me ages to cut all of those pieces of wood. I must admit, I'd love to think there was an easier way, but sadly, I can't think of one. And so at the moment, I'm just applying a coat of PVA glue mixed about half and half maybe one third to two thirds water and um, PVA just trying to make sure it's over everything at the moment <clears throat> I'm not worrying too much about not touching the stairs or anything because the idea is once we're finished I can brush it all off The only thing I would say is, if you're doing big sections, make sure you don't put it on too heavy so it puddles up like this. Else, you're going to get it starting to bow the cardboard. 
hopefully, the way we've done things, it won't do. Now, I've put enough on there for now. What we now do is grab our box. This is the one that I use to put my uh, models over when I'm basting them and such. I'll put the camera up a bit there. There we go. And now all I use for this is clay sand because I don't want the texture of builder sand and such. If you look at that, of course, it is beautifully clear. And all we're going to do is just literally sprinkle it over the whole model. Trying to do one surface at a time. So for instance, at the moment we're doing floors and such. Then I'll go on to do the walls once I turn it. And so on and so on. We don't want to worry too much if we don't finish doing the floors. Or oh, sorry, the um, if we don't finish doing the base because we probably will go over that with a good few more coats. As it is, we're probably going to want to do at least another coat on the building as well. Because it doesn't all go on the first layer. And also, the more layers we do, the rougher the texture. As you can see, I'm just literally tipping the sand over. If I turn it, then you can actually see what I'm doing. It makes much difference, it is tipping. And that's it. Let's try and brush it around a bit, get into the corners as much as possible. side and just repeat this each side and then we're gonna have to leave it to dry once this layer is done before we do the next layer as I said we want to do more than one layer for the simple fact of the sand doesn't go on that heavy This is exactly how I did it on the other model, so that's why I'm quietly confident about this one. I'll probably have to spill half the sand over my table doing that, but there we go. We've got two sides left to do now. But all my sand is now in this box. So if I just try and get past without wiping all of the glue off the side. Just a bit and just finish it off there. Of course don't forget there are gonna be other walls which you need to be done. For instance, that. Scanner, lift it up, tip it, and the last side now. We just tip all the sand up one end. Okay, so <clears throat> I've um, retextured this building now oh, two or three times. 
and I'm just going over it the last time just to get the final points which is for one on the top of where all the corrugated cardboard is cut is of course the corrugation and we don't want that to show up and one other bit that I am picking up is anywhere that there hasn't been a heavy coating of the sand for instance this corner here now one thing that I did see was on terrain tutor he'd actually made up his PVA in a bottle and that <clears throat> for this is a genius idea however when I made it up it didn't quite go to plan um, I'm actually going to blame my PVA I know, immature of me but shh because I had noticed before now when I had tried mixing it that it actually stays rather clumped so we'll go and check out Train Tutor, he's got the tutorial on it and um, give it a go like I said for this sort of thing it's fantastic because you can do one layer uh, apply the sand leave it a little bit and then just spray it on and of course if you're just spraying then it's not damaging it by putting a brush across so you can actually do it when it's still damp which makes the whole piece quicker all I'm doing at the moment is just using a toothbrush, an old toothbrush just to clean off the woodwork and obviously you can do this once it's dry as well but if you just try and clean off as much of it as possible whilst it's damp then all the better right and so obviously some of these pieces of woodwork and such there's still bits on it but such is life anyway that's that we'll come back now when it's um, completely dried and I'll spread it black and we will go on to the painting speak to you soon bye bye